Cool. All right. Thank you so much, Sam, our uh, steady operator for opening up this conversation. Uh, welcome, everyone. For those of you that are tuning in now, my name is Manny Akutiel, and welcome to Manny's Super Civic Cyber Conversations. Uh, those of you who are tuning in, maybe you know in the Mission District, there's a physical place called Manny's. It's still there. It's on the corner of 16 and Valencia, but we are closed uh, for the shelter in place. And so even though we're physically closed, the work is not over. We still have work to do. And so we've organized this set of digital conversations. Uh, and I'm just so honored that people who are so busy and doing so much are taking time to communicate to the community through our conversations. And today, uh, we are honored to have Supervisor uh, of District 9, Hillary Ronan, joining us. Um, two quick housekeeping things or whatever, uh, administrative things. If you'd like to take a picture of your screen and share it on the internet, you can. You can tag Hillary at Hillary Ronan and Manny at Welcome to Manny's. Uh, and also, if you have any questions for Supervisor Ronan, you can just type them into the Q&A at any time. You don't have to wait till the Q&A section. If you have a question, just type it in. We're gonna, this whole program is gonna be 30 minutes uh, or about 25. So that's how long this is gonna take. All right, can I call you Hillary or no? Of course you can. Okay, all right, great. <laughs> it would be weird if you called me Miss Ronan, <laughs> the supervisor Ronan. <laughs> okay, thank you. Just for the next 25 minutes, I'm gonna call you Hillary, if that's okay with you. So, cause I've known you now for so long, for so many years, I feel like there's a thing. So first I just wanna check in with you. Um, we've now been in shelter in place for over a month, I think it is. Um, how is the mission, how is, how is your district doing? Because your district is obviously more than just the mission. Tell us what's going on in your district and what are you hearing on the ground? Yeah, my district's having a hard time. Um, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take it neighborhood by neighborhood. Um, yeah. You know, probably the, the neighborhood that, that's suffering the most is the mission. Um, the, uh, and the homeless crisis is worse than ever. Uh, that's what I've been spending the majority of my time working on um, other than, you know, small businesses, because man, uh, with so many small businesses, including you and the mission, uh, it, it, the, the suffering is, is, is enormous. And, and what I want to see, I'll start with the business side, what I want to see at the end of this, is we, everyone's suffering, everyone's going to stay alive, businesses to stay alive during this crisis. Um, we're not only trying to keep human beings alive, but keep businesses alive and, and, and come through this. So um, done a lot of work around that. But in terms of uh, what, what's happening on the streets um, of the mission is that we have the same crisis of homeless people that we were starting to fix again uh, for, with the tent encampments and get people inside and navigation centers and getting them the help they need, well, not anymore. It's worse than ever. And um, sadly, this administration's uh, strategy to deal with homeless people is requiring them to get sick before they provide any assistance. So right now, um, instead of trying to move people off the streets into safer environments, the 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 strategy of the uh, of the mayor and her staff is to keep people on the streets and like bring a toilet to them well mm -hmm. it was never safe to on the streets in the first place mm -hmm. now it's extra unsafe and 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 i'm talking about seniors people with uh you know serious health problems um they say that medically speaking an individual who's experienced homelessness for a while on the street is 25 years older than their actual age medic in medical terms. Mm -hmm. So um, these are not people that should be ever sleeping on the street, let alone during a pandemic uh, like we have now. So um, that's, that's what I'm working on with most of my time right now. We're fighting, uh, we just passed legislation unanimously requiring by law the city to acquire over 8,000 hotels for every homeless individual that is capable of caring for themselves in a hotel room. And now we're just gonna have to fight with everything we've got to, to actually implement that. Ber Bernal Heights is, is doing better. Um, you know, generally speaking, um, there's, uh, you know, uh, they're single family homes. There's not as much crowding in, in terms of multiple families living inside the same home. 
Um, and, uh, you know, we have public housing here that has been impacted, uh, particularly Anim Alamany Public Housing. They uh, got rid of the bus line down there. And so now folks from Alamany, which is, you know, by a freeway and sort of really off the beaten path, have to walk a half a mile uphill to get transportation. Um, so we're dealing with those types of challenges. Um, there's been a great response neighborhood wise in terms of younger folks getting uh, food and delivering them to older folks. Uh, so um, there's not as much of that immediate you know, crisis need um, similar to the mission, although it's there. People are in their mm -hmm. homes worried how they're going to pay rent mm -hmm. uh, and struggling to homeschool their children while, while doing whatever work that they, that they still can do. And then finally in the Portola, um, you know, the, the, the tagline for the neighborhood is the best neighborhood you've never heard of. Well, um, it's often the forgotten neighborhood. And so we're struggling to get the same food distribution and access to um, food banks and, um, you know, um, uh, the electronic uh, Chromebooks delivered to every family and the internet connections hooked up. So there's slightly different issues that every na neighborhood's facing, but the overall uh, situation is that we are a city that is suffering right now, just like the rest of the country. We have the most expensive city in the country and people can barely afford to live here and stay when they have jobs, let alone when they're not working and sheltering in place. So sorry to be a little bleak in that regard, but um, I'd rather tell the truth <laughs> than paint yes. a, a false rosy picture. Yeah. So let's just go, let me just start at the end and then I want to work to the beginning. So the most recent thing was the piece of legislation that the Board of Supervisors passed unanimously two days ago uh, to require 5,000 hotel room beds to be procured for homeless folks. 8,000. 8, How much did 8, I say? 8,250. You said 8,000. Oh, 8,250. <laughs> Um, those extra 3,250 are very important. Um, <laughs> but what if the city can't do it? Like what's the, it doesn't need to be done by April 26th. And yes, what, ha what happens if like, there's just, it just doesn't happen. Um, you know, look, it's the official law. So if the mayor doesn't, you know, enact the law, then bad on her. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. look, if there's a will, there's a way. And mm -hmm. Um, I just don't, I just don't share her, uh, her category, the way that she talks about homeless people as being, you know, unwilling to accept help and, and not able to care for themselves. And um, sure, that's, that's, that's a portion of the population, just like that's true for any community of people. There are people mm -hmm. that are difficult to work with, no matter what their status is. Um, yeah. That's true. Uh, but if you walk around the streets and talk to people like I've done, um, that's not what I'm seeing. And I'm seeing people saying, are you kidding? If you got gave me a hotel room, it would be so much easier to take care of myself. I am having such a hard time taking care of myself right now with the mm -hmm. restaurants closed and the, the right. grocery stores closed that used to help me out. I mean, Manny's provides like coffee to anyone, you know, all of that's gone. Yeah. And so, um, you know, they're, they're uh, barely getting a meal a day. The city's providing uh, a meal a day, not to everyone on the street, but to a thousand people on the street, one meal a day. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to supplement that by, by uh, partnering with restaurants, including Farming Hope, to, um, which if you don't know, is the, uh, the, yes. the kitchen at Manny's, um, to donate meals and deliver them ourselves to people on the streets. Um, so right. that's to pro provide some supplement. Um, but you know, with, with everything uh, in this crisis, the, the, it, the city is a strong mayoral city. She has a ton of power and under the emergency orders, her powers have quadrupled. So um, we, even by passing legislation, it's a last resort. It takes too long. We don't have time for that right now. But after a month of, of trying to work behind the scenes and push them towards a rational, humane, moral, and cost-effective policy of, of moving people in, 
to hotel rooms where they can quarantine as opposed to getting sick on the streets and filling the hotels and using the ventilators. Um, we, we, we didn't have success. So we had to go public. We had to do this and we're just going to continue to push. And, you know, we'll, we'll keep doing what, what supervisors Haney and Peskin did and do it ourselves if mm -hmm. we have to, just like we're delivering food on our own and, mm -hmm. and all of that. Um, but we've got to push her and we've got to push her hard because the excuses just don't cut it. And, and as a matter of fact, for all of the, the limelight we're getting, uh, doing so well, which, you know, we're doing better than many parts of the country. And I do give the mayor a lot of credit for having made that decision to shelter in place early. And she deserves a lot of that credit. Mm -hmm. um, we're not doing as well as our surrounding country counties. In fact, in the Bay Area, we're doing worse than the rest of the counties. We've had a second spike after going down. We're going back up. The only county in the Bay Area to do that. And that is because I'm convinced, I don't know if this is a fact, but if you look at the 100 cases just at MNC, MSC South, um, that, that, that it's probably the homeless population and, and that's mm -hmm. the main problem. So I interviewed the mayor and I asked her about this and I interviewed Matt and I asked him about this and I'm interviewing Trent, I think on Monday. Um, and you know, what she says is she wants to house homeless people in hotel rooms, but it's not possible. That, that, that you cannot do it, that you cannot take 8,000 people. There aren't the rooms, there aren't the money, not all hotels want it. She, meant, she mentioned yesterday on the, in the press conference that you can't put a hotel full of folks that necessarily have mental or substance abuse issues. And so my question to you is, and you know, I'm just an interviewer, right? I ask the questions, I'm not presuming anything. Um, do you do you agree? Do you do you think she is earnest when she says I want to house all eight thousand people? Does she actually want to? My question is: Is this about will or is this about uh, want? Like, is this about do I? Is this something that are you? Is the is the issue here that she doesn't? If she really wanted to do it, she could do it. Or is this about actually the money isn't there and the infrastructure is just not there to do it the way we'd like to do it? Uh certainly the former if there was the will there's a way we just closed down the entire city <laughs> do you know how crazy is that <laughs> that is the the entire we just stopped the local economy here in san francisco and are forcing people to stay in their homes and stop working the amount of effort and energy that this is taking is huge mm -hmm. if there is a will there is a way um first of all they spent the first month spending all their time, resources, and energy creating a mass congregate shelter at Moscone West that they're now not using <laughs> because- Why aren't they using so it? Because of the, because it was, it just- Because it, it doesn't crazy. make any sense because when you yeah. take a bunch of vulnerable, think about it, you're telling everyone with a home not even to say, like, sh give a hug to their own mom and dad. Yeah. You're, telling, you're telling grandchildren to stand across the street from their grandparents in wave. And yeah. yet you're going to put 400 of the people who've been exposed to more illness and more people in, in a tiny setting where the only thing dividing each other is a piece of tape on the ground. I mean, it's like so obviously flawed logic and was from the get go. And you talk to any medical expert or anybody that specializes in homelessness and they will all tell you that that was a ridiculous, insane plan to begin with. Mm -hmm. If they had spent that whole month planning to get hotels and training up disaster workers and community workers to staff those hotels in responsible ways, I mm -hmm. promise you we would not be in the situation that we're in. So mm -hmm. I call BS on all of that, number one. Okay. Okay. But number two, I'm not saying that every homeless person can take care of themselves. And we do need to use some congregate settings, very small congregate settings staffed by appropriate medical um, experts where there is a, a, a ton of separation between people for those that are severely addicted to drugs or alcohol um, and for those with a serious mental illness. Those people should not be in a hotel room. But that is not the 
it's certainly not half of the homeless population. If you mm -hmm. talk to, to Jeff Kaczynski, who ran our, our homeless department right, right. Uh, for about four years, he will tell you that at least half the population does not fit into that category and is more than capable of taking care of themselves. In fact, uh, um, a fourth of that population was housed recently and was yeah. doing just fine, was evicted because of the skyrocketing rents and because of, uh, of poverty and not being able to right. afford to live here. Um, if you talk to the homeless advocates, like the Coalition on Homelessness, they'll tell you, oh gosh, it's like two thirds of the homeless people are in that category. So, so let's say we're just talking about half and we're using Jeff Kaczynski's, in my opinion, conservative estimate. That's how we get to the 8,250 number. That does not include half of the homeless population living in shelters on the street. We're just saying, how's the half that there is no doubt can take care of themselves? And this is what community uh, or supportive housing providers do all over San Francisco. We have more expertise at how do you house a population who's been chronically homeless on the street for many, many years in a successful way. We have more expertise in our nonprofit community than, than ever. They are offering up to help. There's just no structure within which mm -hmm. for them to plug in. The hotels that Supervisor Preston and Haney got, um, they're doing that in partnership with the people that ran the shelters that the people came from. And so right. they're, they know the individuals, they're, they're working with them, et cetera. Yes, we need to train and staff up. Um, but you, you're telling me we're not capable of, uh, you know, in a, in a two-day training, let's say, train up people, have, have at least two staffers that are familiar with working in this population, and then two that are brand new and learn on, on the job after training with proper uh, PPE protective gear. Of course we can do this. It, you know, I think, it, you know, if you look at the language um, that both Trent and London have been using, the mayor have been using to describe homeless people, they, they, you can't force them to want help. They don't want help. They're incapable of caring for themselves. It's not fiscally, um, uh, you know, prudent to provide them these hotel rooms. It looks, they, they have prejudices against this community that, um, that, that I find extremely problematic, that I do not agree with. And that if you spend the time talking to people on the street, not saying that like, there's not, there's not that they're always gonna be easy to, to work with, but if you ask them, which we did, and we did a whole video of the interviews. Yes, and said, I think I think my conversation with Mayor Breed was the intro to that video. That's right, that's right. And where she showed her real yeah. feelings towards this population, it's like, they looked at me like I was crazy when I asked them, do you want a hotel room and could yeah. you take care of yourself in the hotel room? They're like, do you know how hard it is to take care of myself yeah. on the street? Of course, it would be so much easier. And this one guy, and it's probably uh, close to 60, diabetic, he prays for it to be freezing, even though he's freezing on the street at night, so that his insulin stays fresh outside. He was like, oh my gosh, if I had one of those little refrigerators in a hotel room, I could keep my insulin fresh for longer. And it would be so much cleaner and easier for me to, to you know, give myself these injections in a safe way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would ask Trent and, and the mayor to go out and talk to people uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and ask them themselves and not make the, these judgments. All right, I, 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 we could talk about this the whole time, but I know our time is limited. We do have questions and I wanted to give people the opportunity to ask you questions directly. So I'm just gonna ask you one or two more questions. Sure. So if you have questions for Supervisor Rowan, you can type them in now. Um, I wanna talk about the new normal that, I mean, obviously we're not there yet and then that's the, the, that's the name of the game, but what you, everyone is starting to talk about this, what the eventual reopening does look like. And, um, you know, it's really scary. It, it's, it's scary as a small business owner. I mean, obviously it's scary as an unemployed person. Um, I'm not unemployed. I still have my business. I'm still working. This is what I'm doing. But I imagine if you are someone that was let off, if you then read, hey, everyone's going to be at half capacity, 
-hmm. we're not sure when we're going to let certain industries open. Then you're like, oh my God, like, am I going to be unemployed while shelter in place is lifted? Like, how's that going to work? And then if you're someone like me and you're in the F&B industry or you're in the venue business, you're like, oh, it's hard enough to run a restaurant if at 100% capacity where you're trying to bring everyone in. I went into Manny's today and I marked out six feet, you know, table by table. And I'm like, I'm going to be able to put three tables in my restaurant. You know what I mean? And like, how's that going to work? So, so how do you feel like no one is questioning the public health? No one is saying don't do this, right? But what do you think is going to be the role of the government in massaging what will likely be a slow, arduous, and uncomfortable roll back to normal? Well, I, you know, one of the biggest things that I'm trying to fight for and, and sadly don't have the power to do myself at the local level is uh, rent cancellation and mortgage uh, forbearance, um, where simultaneously uh, banks forgive all the interest and all the fees and all the, um, you know, uh, you know, late fees during this crisis, maybe extend the mortgage a couple more years or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. or a couple more months or whatever, um, but that nothing's charged. And then cancel all the debt that people have accumulated in rent yeah. during this period. Because what, what keeps me up at night is, you know, fantastic. We have this eviction moratorium. That's great. And fantastic to, to Supervisor Preston for making sure that um, people will have six months to pay any accumulated debt. But as you say, we're not gonna go back into our regular life the way we were before. Nobody knows what that's gonna look like and it's gonna ebb and flow is probably most likely, in, in which case nobody's gonna have that stability um, that we need in order to have a vibrant economy again. And so during that period of time, the last thing is I want is people to be saddled with this looming debt that if they're unable to pay, will render them homeless at the end of this. I am so worried about that. And so, mm -hmm. you know, Supervisor Haney and I have been working together. We passed in a, a resolution unanimously calling on the governor and the, the president of the Congress uh, to force a rent forgiveness and mortgage forbearance program on the country, country at large. Mm -hmm. um, and we organized with local policymakers across the country uh, who are doing that same thing. And we're trying to build a, a mass movement, basically. We're working more as organizers than politicians uh, because that is the single thing that is going to make the difference between getting getting to jumpstart this economy, um, it, you know, in a, in a faster, more stable way, or sending us into the second Great Depression, uh, okay. more so than anything else. And, and so I just, I, we all have to have a mass movement. We have to organize. If we have to, you know, do a rent and mortgage strike, um, and, and, and all of us, even those of us like myself who are getting paid during this process, just join in in solidarity. You know, mm -hmm. we, we must all work uh, to, to do this for the good of our economy. And quite frankly, you know, in two days, the feds could give, the Federal Reserve could give $1.5 trillion to the banks. That needs to be passed on to the mortgage holders. And that needs to then be passed on to the renters, you know, and it's not there. Unlike the state and local governments, the feds don't have to balance their budget every year. So we need a bailout like we have never seen before. The first bailout just getting started. And, and mm -hmm. that's ultimately what it's going to take. And gosh, let's hope we get that guy out of the White House and, um, and, and Biden can get to work on, on, on rational policy making again. Right. Okay, well, I know we, we are limited to time, so I want thank you for that answer, by the way, Hillary. And I just want to get to some of these questions. Carrie asks, is the family shelter at BVHM still hosting families? It is still hosting families, and it's one of the best um, shelters we've got because they have now the entire school to spread out on. So unlike the gym where they were sleeping on before, they, ha they are taking over the entire school. So there is genuine social distancing happening in a very safe way. So mm -hmm. yay, VVHM. <laughs> awesome. 
Question is, what efforts are being made to open more SFUSD lunch sites in the district, uh, like Paul Revere, for instance? Yeah, um, you know, that's controlled by the school board, not by the Board of Supervisors. Um, and while I am in touch with them, I don't know that there are efforts underway to open more sites than, than, than those that are already there. I think the school district has their hands full uh, feeding the, you know, half the city every single right. day um, on its own and, and making sure everyone has internet connection. Uh, I, I, I do need to shout out for our public school system, you know, way to show how social, a, a socialist system works when everyone is entitled to something. Not only do they meet their basic need by trying, by, by keeping up some form of education, but they're feeding half the city and right. has connected. Right. So right. my hat is off to them. Question from Joel, what does Supervisor Ronan expect to see happen once the city reopens and hotels return to somewhat normal operations? What, assuming the city goes forward housing homeless in hotels. So what uh, Supervisor Haney and I um, have been talking about and what we want is, you know, most of the hotels will get back up and running and, and host tourists again. But some, you know, like many businesses are going, going to go out of business and we want to be ready to purchase any hotel <laughs> that wants to go out of business that we get it and that becomes permanent uh, supportive housing uh, for the homeless population. You know, navigation centers and shelters have always been temporary housing. They've never been the first choice. And here might be an opportunity for us to, you know, really expand our a permanent affordable housing stock in the city and we need to do everything in our power and the state needs to help us to get a hold of those buildings if they do go up for sale. So that's part of the solution. The other part, I hate to say it, we're gonna be back to where we started just before this, <laughs> fighting to get more navigation centers and affordable housing open, struggling to keep people safe on the streets, um, and to get people off the streets because mm -hmm. it's, it's never been okay for people to be on the streets and certainly not now. Mm -hmm. um, I just, uh, I know you, we have one minute left, so I just want to end by asking you about um, how you think all this might affect what is, I think, so attractive about the mission, which is its sense of community and diversity. And I use the word diversity. The, the word diversity is thrown all around a lot. Um, but what, the reason why I, I wanted to do this in the mission, we talked about this years ago, is because it's one of the few communities left in San Francisco where you really have a mixing of everyone. And you know, you go around, you walk around the mission, whether it's Calle 24 or Valencia or Mission Street or whatever, and you still feel like you are surrounded by a broad swath of San Francisco. And I'm wondering how you think this will this might affect uh, the mission in a way that we might miss. And also, I want you to end uh, by how you think this could actually bring us closer together. And maybe there are some there's some ways in which this could be uh, there could be some positive outcomes from this on just the feel of your district and our community. Sure. Um, so, look, the mission has has you know is often used as the model of advanced gentrification. Um, so that diversity that you speak about has been threatened and, and eroded uh, for decades um, in the Mission District. And, and that threat remains the same, I think, under, under this, this threat. Um, the solution to that and what has always been to the solution to that and why I fight so hard for affordable housing is because if we don't have either government subsidized or you know uh, privately forced <laughs> below market housing then it doesn't happen and so um you know we're never going to build enough housing in san francisco e even though we need to build a lot more market rate housing we're never going to build enough to bring prices down to an affordable level and so we're going to have to have government subsidized housing and if there's one positive that come from this, if this shakes up the housing market to make rental housing cheaper and to, um, you know, place more buildings up for sale, we as a city and as a state and as a federal government need to buy land. <laughs> we need to buy land as 
fast as possible so that we can uh, either preserve it for affordable housing or just land bank it for future building of affordable housing. But that's how we're gonna maintain the diversity of the mission that we all love so much. Um, and then, I, you know, the, the, the hard parts of this are, are you know, endless and, and without saying, but there has been also countless positives. I mean, I don't know about you all, I know my neighbors so much better than I've ever known them. We all go out at eight o'clock and we bang pots and pans and yeah. we bring food to one another. You know, we yeah. leave it on the doorstep and walk away. And um, the, the, the camaraderie, the way we're helping, we now have a block list. I have everyone's phone number and email on my block now because we're all calling each other to make sure everyone's okay. That sort of self-organized community is, uh, you know, not something we normally see. And you know, I'm a democratic socialist. I believe that um, for basic human needs, food, housing, healthcare, education, that everyone should be entitled to those things. And, and sometimes that thought that, that this way of thinking is radical or, you know, I, I don't, I think that that's gonna shift a lot in people's mind. I mean, for me, the most, one of the most functional institutions have been our public schools because they have the trust and the access to the widest range of, of people and they're feeding them and they're educating them and they're getting them hooked up to the internet. Way more than the city's been able to do for, for a real wide variety of people. I'm a big believer in Medicare for all. The amount of people that are gonna lose their health insurance, we're gonna see a movement like we've never seen for Medicare for all. So that on a political level, I think it's gonna be is gonna be positive. And then hopefully, 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 because you know, it wasn't I wasn't a Biden supporter, you know, a few months ago or, or last month. But um, and and the reason, you know, one of the reasons I wasn't a Biden supporter is because I didn't think he could win. Um, I just he wasn't different enough uh, from from Trump to win. Mm -hmm. I think the the failure of Trump to to keep us safe during this crisis and 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 oh my just God. The, the, his daily actions oh. are gonna are gonna make it so Biden wins, which he has to win. He has to. He, he has to win. He has to. And 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 we are going even if he is a corporate Democrat, which I have issues with. He is a person who actually feels and cares about other human beings. He's not a psychopath. <laughs> he <laughs> believes in science. <laughs> he uh, believes in the role of government helping people um, and not just serving the ultra rich. Um, you know, we're going to have a rational, intelligent, thoughtful huh. human being back in the White House. And even though I hope we get someone more progressive in the future, that will be the most welcome change I could possibly think at, about. And I really think he has a good chance of winning now. So please, 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 please stay tuned. We're gonna, you know, make sure voting oh, yeah. is, is safe and, and, and everyone can vote, but please vote for Biden. Yeah. <laughs> That's the last thing I will say, please vote. And, and, as the biggest Bernie supporter you're ever gonna meet, please vote for Biden. Yeah. Ah, uh, Hillary, well, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. I know you're doing a lot right now, and I really appreciate it. I want to thank everyone for tuning in as well. It's one o'clock on a weekday, and so thank you for participating in your, in your democracy. I also just want to plug Manny's. Like I said, we are shut down. We do need your help. Uh, we, are, we are making no money right now. This is the only way in which we're bringing folks in, and so if you are willing and able to help support my small business right now, you can go to the link above. It's joinit.org slash o slash manis. It's also in the chat box. So if you go to the chat box, you can click on the link as well. You can become a sponsor for $36 a month to help us make it through the slow uh, process back to normal, whatever that ends up being. Or you can make a one-time donation as well. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank my team here, Jupiter, Sam, and Ram. Um, for putting this all together. So Jupiter, Sam, and Ram, thank you so much. And Sam, thank you for operating this call. Again, the link is joinit.org slash o slash mannies. Thank you, Hillary, for opening yourself up to your constituents and to the people who've tuned in. Go fight, win. And I hope to bring you into Manny soon. And uh, yes. And I will just say that I'm ashamed to say that I have not yet become a member, but I'm going to become a member ah! right now. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate right it. Now. 
<laughs> follow, follow Hillary's lead, everyone. Become a member. Does. Keep Be like, open. <laughs> like Supervisor Ronan. All right, thank you so much, Supervisor. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye. Whip, 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 whip